Welcome back to Wall Street Week. We're talking now with Bob Nardelli, one of the most successful CEOs of all time. Bob, the one thing investors hate more than anything is uncertainty in 2016. He's creating it, and yet you see all of these uh, workers are rallying behind Donald Trump. What do you think of that, and where do you think this is going uh, well, in November? Two, po two points. Again, when you talk to some of the Fortune 500 in the Business Council and some of the surveys, uncertainty is top of the list uh, of concern. The uncertainty in currency, the uncertainty in the economy, the uncertainty in a whole host of things. I think the blue collar worker, the average worker out there support of Donald Trump is well founded. It's well placed. I think it would be great to get a business oriented person in the White House versus what we've had for the last eight years. We need, you, you think about this administration, Anthony, has shut down 400 billion dollars of potential merger and acquisition that would help grow companies, create productivity, streamline to, to the consumer, bring better products faster, sooner, more affordable. Well, I think that's a big point. Why do you think they've point. done that, though? I think our viewers want to know. Why do you think that they have done that, they've collapsed on business in that way? I, I just don't think there's a bias towards business. I don't think they understand the markets. I don't think they support capitalism. And, and they, they're on a different agenda. I mean, if you, look, if you look at the two potential candidates, you know, we, we lost the world champion boxer a few days ago. And if you were to compare this to a boxing card, kind of a double entendre here, Trump versus Clinton. Trump, Clinton, right? So, so I think uh, we're going to have a great uh, next couple you of months. think Donald Trump is the next president? I do. I do, and I think it would be good for this country. I think he's bringing, you know, we, we all have you know, some, some detractors out there. You're going to vote for Donald Trump? Yes. All right, well, you just made, you made Anthony very happy. Let, let's just go back to the markets for a second, Bob. Anthony points He's out... Going for him too, by the Anthony, way. Anthony, Anthony points out about the uncertainty, uh, the, the slow economy, the uncertainty about the election, and yet the S&P is flirting with its, you know, all-time high again. Yes. We obviously know that's all about the Fed. The Fed is going to meet next week. Uh, the markets have rallied in the last several weeks because the anticipation now is the economy is so slow, the Fed's going to sit on their hands again. Yep. Is this a good thing that the Fed continues to dictate the capital markets? Well, look, I'm not an expert, but here's my point of view on that. I, I don't think Yellen will raise the rates. She's very concerned about going up and having to come back. Right. And so that's point number one. I think subconsciously a lot of people are frustrated with the lack of return because of the low interest rates, Gary. And therefore, subconsciously, they are taking more risk by going into the equities market. Well, they're being forced into the markets. Because there's no alternative. Yeah. Now, you see a lot of people going into munis recently. You, you've read about some of that because, again, not as high a return, but at least some more security, some more certainty about it. And, and it's better than keeping it in cash. But I think people are going to the equities market because let's, they let's have say, no let's choice. Stay on, let's stay on rates for a second. I mean, the, ne the amount of negative interest rates that are out there, the amount of paper that is out around the world now with negative interest rates, am I naive or, 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 or this worries me? This is very, very scary, the amount of money that's being put into negative interest rates where there'll be no return. What, what, what is this going to look like five years from now? Uh, it, it is scary, you know, and you'd hate to see that happen here in the U.S. And we see it around the globe, right. Gary, and, and it's very concerning and, and, and creates a lot of anxiety that you put your money in there and you have to pay right. to put your money into an account. I mean, it's, it's unconscionable. But, but, but the reason for it is really slow growth. And so, yes. so, that, so if you got the economy in the United States growing at 4%, it's 23% of the global economy, it would lift the tide of the rest of the market. And so, so what steps would you like to see? It's day one, Trump administration, what yes. would be the first 100 days that you'd like to see well, listen, to get the economy growing? I, I think some of his platform points are spot on. Let's talk about reform in corporate tax so that we now are competing. I, I know when I was running GE Power Systems and I had to compete against uh, uh, Siemens or ABB, you know, I knew I was at a disadvantage, so I had to bring some innovation and, and competition to the You're marketplace. At a disadvantage because of why? Because of corporate tax. Corporate tax. Because of corporate tax. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the world, Gary. Yeah. So, I think Trump's platform about tax, corporate tax reform for businesses is very positive. I think we'll see a repatriation. I think what we're doing on on policy and regulation, we'll see a repatriation of jobs back to this country. We killed one of the greatest growth areas we had 
and that is energy independence by not allowing for export of oil and natural gas. Now, we the naysayers are saying climate change is the reason why they've done that. What's your response to that? Uh, I'm sensitive to climate change, but if you think about the job creation, if you think about the average worker on a rig, Anthony was making $93,000 a year. Not the $180,000 a starting lawyer is making, but still a very good paying job. That's why we saw people living out of their cars and trucks and so forth because of that. But we killed energy independence. It's crazy. We went from 4,000 rigs to 400 rigs, and we could have really used it as a geopolitical advantage. Mm -hmm. We could have helped, uh, you know, the Germany uh, over there with their concern about we Russia and so our forth. military yep. strategy as well. Clearly, it could have helped us on a geopolitical basis. Well, let's end it on a positive note. Uh, I know that uh, you'll speak to Donald about having Bob uh, join that Blue Ribbon Committee. It's Mr. Trump to you, Gary. Because, so uh, because, because I, th I think it would be great. And uh, Bob, thank you for joining us today. Um, we'll be right back with more. Thank you, guys. Thanks.